I'm out of the way. There we go. It's top loader disappearing into the distance. Now, I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio by quite a few people. Do you want to say hi, guys, in the background? Hi. Uh, so we know there's people in the studio. Now, I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio by, uh, from, by, by Rosie from Rosie and the Goldbug. Um, it's an indie rock trio, and it's yourself, Rosie, Lee and Joseph. So thanks very much for coming in today. It's lovely to see you. Nice to see you too. Thank you very much. And you look, I was just give you a description. You look very much like a very young Kate Bush, which is oh. a which is a fantastic look to have yeah, in anyone's that's kind. Thank you. So um, thanks for coming in today. We're going to talk about uh, the single which is out on the seventh of August called Hey You. Um, but before we do that, you grew up uh, in Cornwall. Yeah. Did you grow up in a musical family, and what was it like growing up in Cornwall? Yeah, I, my parents are both musicians, and um, it was yeah, it's a really beautiful place to grow up. Had horses, and you know go to the beach and stuff like that so it's pretty inspiring and what sort of music did you grow up listening to what sort of music did they play um they played a lot of folk really joan Baez, um bob dylan um and uh you know those kind of classics and uh, I, I listened to a lot of that but the thing that really got me was the 80s you know with uh cindy lauper and she, you know, I, I was really inspired by that. So we will talk about Cindy in, in a little <laughs> while. So, so growing up, you it was na- was it natural that you were going to be a musician? You couldn't grow up in a household and not be a musician. Do you think? Well, I actually went into acting for a bit, um, and I thought that was what I was going to do. But the mm. problem was, um, I didn't like being told when I could and couldn't act. So you, you know, having to go through the audition process was really hard for me. Yeah. Um, and I found that being a musician, you could do that all the time. You, you know, there was no one telling you when you could and couldn't do something. So you could do it at home. Whereas, yeah, the, you know, the comparisons with acting was just. Uh, so yeah, I went. I went for the musician. Yeah, roots because it is so. difficult with doing acting because you have, you have to show it's not like showing up for a casting yeah. and then being rejected because you're not tall enough or it's and it's very with music you can you can gig all over the place and as you said sing whenever you want to sing but with yeah. acting it is very much they're looking for a certain person aren't they yeah. for the job yeah and it's really restrictive so yeah I, I need to I'm very creative and I like to express myself a lot so <laughs> Well, do you remember? Do you remember you play um, keyboards um, beautifully? And uh, when did you first write your very first song? How old were you? And do you remember what it was about, or any of the lyrics at all? Um, one of the first ro- ones I wrote was a song called Butterfly, hmm. and um, it was about um, where I grew up in this small town. There was a lot of uh, what we had. We used to call them boy races. Yep. So I wrote a song about them, and they, I compared them to butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> We have a lot of butterflies around in Essex as well, yeah. don't we? Yeah, a lot of, you might have heard that. Do you, have you heard of Esther? They talk much about Essex down in Cornwall. Have we got a, what sort of reputation? You can be nice. Um, well. I've got some friends from Essex, yeah. so I really, I, I haven't been here much, but I really like it. Yeah, it's a good place. Yeah. It is a good place. There we go. Let put that straight. And yeah. uh, now you're going to play, uh, first of all, first tune, you're going to play a couple of uh, live tunes for us as well. And then we've got the single we're going to play at the end, which is called Hey You, out on the 7th of August, which we'll talk more about later. So tell us about the first track and uh, tell us about the lyrics and uh, what it's about. Um, the first one I'm going to play is Running in the Dark, and that was our first single. And that was out um, in May. Hmm. Um, So I wanted to play that because it's quite fresh. Lovely. Here we go. It's not as it seems 
was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Uh, oh, I was drifting off then. It was lovely. Uh, now, um, you formed Rosie and the Goldbug in 2007. Yeah. How did all of you guys sort of meet up and, uh, and tell us about how you got the name as well? Okay. Um, well, we met up because I knew Pixie, the bass player yeah. from school. We'd, we'd known each other for years and used to go out with my sister as well. Yeah. So... Um, I actually went out with my best friend also so <laughs> so this, this is lee this is lee matthews why is, why is he called pixie just to because he looks like a pixie oh bless like a cornish pixie <laughs> oh, right okay so he's um he's i mean he's very handsome but yep. he's only like five foot two so yep. and he's got little pixie ears oh bless yeah which is quite cool actually <laughs> yeah so he's the bass player um so i asked him to join the band and then we had um a girl drummer called plums and she was with us for years. Mm. Um, and then the band broke up for a bit and then we reformed and we've got Bubs, which is also known as Joseph, yep. although we never call him that. Right. So he's Bubs Taylor and he plays drums and um, he was just gigging about in Cornwall. So I asked him if he wanted to join yep. the band because he was really good. And um, we went from there. And the name is uh, a reference to Edgar Allan Poe, one of the stories in that, the short stories uh, called The Gold Bug. Mm. And it was one of the first Poe stories I ever read. Yeah. Um, and I just felt really inspired by it. So um, I thought I wanted a name like Adam and the Ants or Susie and the Banshees or something. So so your your sort of influences, um, I know we talked about your parents being a musician. As you got older, you're saying sort of influences came from the sort of 80s era. What yeah. sort of... What sort of stuff were you were you kind of influenced by? Who were they? Um, mainly Cindy Lauper. Yeah, it, that's a big influence of mine. Um, I love I love her so much. Mm. So um, who else? Well, I suppose like um, it's a bit earlier. I suppose that sort of seventies, and that's you know like Susie and the Banshees are really liked, and Patti Smith. Yeah, um, and then sort of going through to newer things. Uh, it was like PJ Harvey and Tori Amos. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, Kate Bush. But I discovered Kate Bush through Tori Amos, which is kind of backwards. But yeah. I needed to find out why everyone was talking about Kate Bush. And I was I was like, you know, when they talk about Tori Amos, and yeah. I, I discovered it that way around. Yeah. So, yeah, it's one of those... I, I kind of remember Kate just hearing uh, the song Wuthering Heights. I remember hearing that and thinking, what is that? What is that voice? It was just incredible. incredible. Yeah. yeah. I think she was probably only about... Um, was she only about 20, I think, then, when she released... Might have been a little bit younger than that yeah. when she released it. It was incredible. Uh, now, we're talking about Cindy Lauper, who is just... Whenever you see her interviewed, she's got a very, really powerful voice as well on stage. Very powerful yeah. voice. Written some fantastic, uh, beautiful songs as well, like True Colours. But you got to... Uh, you got to go on tour with her, didn't you? I did, yeah. And what yeah. was that like for a hit? That was your meeting your hero. What was that like? It was amazing. I cried when I got told that I was going on tour with her. I was yeah. just so excited. <laughs> um, but yeah, she was uh, she was great actually, and we danced on some tables in Oslo in a nightclub together, which was a highlight of the tour. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she was great, mm. really great. And what sort of, uh, did you pick anything up from her sort of in the way that she kind of deals with people? Is she is she that exuberant off on stage and off stage? She's the same sort of person, is she? Yeah, she is actually. And one thing I picked up from her was that um, she she had flu actually. And um, I kind of think that was the band's fault mm. because we went on tour and our sound engineer got flu. Yeah. And then eventually Cindy Lauper ended up with flu as well. And it was going around. She carried on regardless, which was really impressive. Yeah. So she still went on stage. Yeah. It's, it's it's difficult though if you get throats with yourself. Are you one of the singers that well, you know, you have any hot lemon beforehand, or do you just get on and just go? Tend to just get on and do it. Yeah. 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 There are. I've had. I won't say who they were, but it was somebody we had in the studio. I don't know what I'm whispering for. It was somebody we had in the studio a very long time ago, and the boys will probably remember who came in. It was from quite a well-known band, and you know, he took he went through the songs about six times before he went live. Really? Yeah. There we go. And you come in and you play beautifully straight off. That's well. what I mean. You see what, what I mean? That's what I mean. You, know, you, 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 don't, you don't need to be rehearsing like for hours now. But we, 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 I was literally sitting here going, I've got to go in a minute. I've got the next person's coming on. Yeah. Um, now, the next track uh, we're going to play for us, tell us a little bit about this track. Um, it's called X-Ray Symphony. Mm-hmm. So it's, we, we're playing it in rehearsal. It, it's a brand new song, actually. We only wrote it about two weeks ago. And um, it's uh, it's 
when we play it with the band it's quite a sort of big noise and we've got a lot of synthesizers going on mm -hmm. with it but now I'm just doing a stripped back version of it so I just I really like it at the moment and it's fun to play so right here yeah. we go lovely live music in the studio here we go Can we have a bit more of a round of applause? Yeah? Yeah. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> I don't really expect to see Tony, and I think he's disappeared off somewhere. So he's disappeared. Um, now, um, you've been, it's been said, um, I'll, I'll read out what some of the reviews have got. So Kate Bush on crack with gold frap on synths was one of the ways you were described. Um, so um, do you still, when you're on stage, tell us about what it's like when you're playing on stage, um, what the band looks like on stage and what buzz do you get? And do you, well, actually, do you still get a buzz when you play live? Yeah, definitely get a massive buzz. It's yeah. so much fun. It's what we live for, really. It's like the band's currency to to play and get, you know, a good feeling. Mm. So we've got, um, well, it's a three piece. We don't have any guitars. It's just synths, uh, bass and drums. Yep. And, um, it's it's quite boisterous and feisty when we play as a band. It's quite noisy. Mm. Um, you know, when we rehearse, we we have to watch that we don't annoy our neighbours. Yeah. <laughs> Put it that way. <laughs> um, yep. So it's it's quite different to what I'm playing now. You know, this is just like a sort of stripped back yep. acoustic version of what we do. Mm. Um, but yeah, you'll have to come and see us play live to make up your mind for yourself. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Now, we will be talking about the single in, in a little while as well. When you actually go in to start writing, do you sit down at the keyboards? Do you get the do you get a melody or do you get a, do you write poetry or do you get together with the guys and then you kind of build up songs? How does it how does it work, your writing process? Both, actually. Um, my favourite way, which the boys don't like so much, is when I write something on my own and then I tell them what to do. Yeah. <laughs> 
that's the best way really <laughs> but they don't like that very much they yeah. like to be involved with the the whole process so yeah. the two singles we've got at the moment they were very much like a collaboration mm. between between all of us and you've got similar sort of uh, starters would they ever come to you and say we've got this lyric or is it more they'd sort of like we've got this sort of beat going would you say uh pixie definitely comes to me with lyrics mm. and ideas and um then i have to sort of work them through and make them my own yeah which is you know it's part of the process which can be a lot of fun actually and would you say you're the main person so you know he's saying you write together but is it your idea is this is the way that you want it to sound because it's difficult sometimes if you're in a i mean you're in a three-piece but if you've got more members of the band you normally have to have that person that says this is the way I want it done. So are you that person? Yeah, that's why I put my name in the title. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But it's it's true because it is, if you're working in creative people with their ideas and you need to have that person that says, I don't want it like that, this is how I want it. Well, it's really difficult otherwise because it's just who, you know, who's going to have the final say and Mm. it can be sort of washed out a little bit if you're if you're being too caring about, I mean, I am very caring, don't get me wrong. I, I love the guys and... But yeah, I, I must say I get the final say. And what about when you go into the studio? Do you have can you control over the uh, production of what you how you want things to sound? Yeah, we've been working with a guy called Gareth Young recently, and he um, he has a lot to do with how it sounds. Um, and but we've known him for years. Yeah. So he sort of it's it's quite intuitive when we work with him. We don't have to boss him around too much. He kind of knows what we're what we're after so yeah that's really good now you're gonna play another live song and we're gonna have the, the song hey you at the end which is uh, released on the 7th of august which is going to be coming um you've got today you, we'll talk about the ep that is top secret at the moment yeah. but we're not well, it's kind of top secret. we're not going to talk about it too much but that is coming up when you've got loads of tracks to go on that yeah um so uh, what song are you going to play for us now uh it's a song called i want you back Okay, and tell us about it. This is a question to ask singer-songwriter. Do you write, and I ask every single songwriter when you're in a happy mood or do you write your best stuff when you're in a, a down mood? <laughs> Miserable mood. <laughs> <laughs> it's like little tissue that's blotting away the tears. Yeah, no, I cry a lot when I write songs. Yeah. Yeah, drink cups of tea, cry a lot, and, uh, yeah, just sort of get ideas out. But if I'm happy, I'm I'm at the beach. Yeah. I'm not, yeah, I'm definitely not playing the piano if I'm happy, so... That's where I'd be if I was near a beach, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are kind of, we got South End, but that's nothing compared down to Cornwall, is it, really? It's probably really nice, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but you can't really surf at South End. Can you surf at South End? I don't not unless you take your life in your hand. No. <laughs> <laughs> they go, no, you can't. Uh, right, here we go. There's more live music in the studio. Doesn't matter 
in the studio I have haven't I yeah. <laughs> all just all glaring at me um, so you've got uh, a new EP uh, coming out soon will yeah. it be is that going to be sort of towards the end of the year and tell us a little bit about the songs that are going to be going on there or are you just in the writing uh, process at the moment we've got lots of songs um, that we'd like to put on it so yeah. really it's an album that we want to do but we're just kind of seeing how it goes with an EP to start off with yeah and um we're not entirely sure which two other songs are going to go on the EP yet. We've got we've got several in mind, um, so yeah, they it's kind of yeah we'll figure out very soon which ones they're going to be. But that's part of the exciting process of choosing. It's good. And what about the? Have you managed to? I would presume that you're very, you know, you're there with the artwork and the way the, the way the album will look. So have you got ideas in your head already, sort of buzzing around for everything else? Yeah, it's been really good funding the artwork for the two singles actually. Mm. Um, so when we do the EP artwork, yeah, it's going to be very exciting. Our friend Joe Skinner, um, who's from Cornwall, he he did the artwork on our first. Uh, single, so I'm hoping he can do the artwork for the EP, mm. and um, he's just got loads of great ideas. He kind of he does sort of weird collages, which where he uses like photographs and and cuts out bits from magazines, and then just kind of puts it all together. And it's just yeah, it's just fascinating. So it should be something like that for the EP. And it's it's one of those places. Growing up in Cornwall, what do you think attracts? I mean, it's a lovely place. Anywhere by the sea is fantastic to, to live. Why do you think it attracts so many creative people? It must have been great growing up when you've got loads of other musicians and artists in that kind of area. Um, I think it's because you're allowed to be mad down there. Yes. <laughs> which is really good. You know, people don't judge you. They're just not that they necessarily judge you anywhere else. But um, I was out with my manager in Mayfair this weekend and um, they definitely thought I was an eccentric, put yeah. it that way. So. <laughs> Whereas Cornwall is kind of like it's just accepted that you can be an eccentric and and mad and it kind of like the more you're like that the better down there. Are you doing any? Are you sort of moving towards now doing gigs up? Uh, obviously you've toured with Cindy Lauper, but are you going to be doing gigs in London? Are you sort of lining those up towards the end of the year or start of the new year? Where, where are you going to be? Should going? be towards the end of the year. Um, we did one recently um, up in London that was that was great fun and it's always good to get up and you know play to a London audience because they yeah. are very different to where we come from you know they're they're a lot cooler so they're <laughs> kind of like you have to warm them up and yeah that, that can be quite a challenge but I like the challenge it, yeah did you, I thought when you meant cooler I thought oh she's just insulted, insulted the people of Cornwall you meant cool as in they're a little bit more reserved yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean anything bad by that. Um, so um, you've got the um, it's got the the single which we're going to play in a second called Hey You. Yeah. Um, before we go talk about that, um, and you can tell us all about it. And it's released on the seventh of August. You've got a video to go with this as well. Yeah. Uh, so where did you shoot that? At my house. Excellent. Yeah. Um, my boyfriend makes uh, documentaries, and um, he shot the video for us. So we got a whole load of gold bugs involved, which. They're basically um, our friends that wear gold lame cat suits, and they're all in the music video. So it's quite a lot of fun. I definitely recommend watching it. Excellent. Have you got quite a lot of hits on it already? Is it going yeah. quite well? Yeah. Yeah, it's going well. So it's um, yeah, it's fun. And the first video we did um, for Running in the Dark was also, you know, that's equally as fun as well. And it's got um, our friend dancing in it, Dean Nolan. And um, he he absolutely he was amazing, mm. it? so it's worth watching that also. So you you've got really create you've got the creative thing. You don't it was with your um, record company. Yeah, you kind of got a bit of a, a free hand because sometimes you hear people get like signed into things and they don't really have too much. Um, you know, they're kind of stuck. But you seem to be able to do a bit. You know, you you can design whatever you like on your artwork. You have got your video. You can go into the studio. You've got quite a lot of creative freedom, and that's the way you like it. You don't want to be sort of held. 
backed yeah. by a record company. Yeah, it's really important, and um, it's it's a partnership, really. So it has to work like that. Otherwise, you know, you're you'd just be desperate to get out of your contract and move on. So it'd be, you know, it's nice to work with people that you get on with and and um, and have a lot of fun while you're doing it. Mm. So that I think that's so important. Yeah. Uh, with the um, gigs, uh, tell it, uh, first of all, can we have the Twitter and Facebook and the website details? Right, the Twitter is Rosie Goldbug. Um, Facebook is We Are Rosie and the Goldbug. And um, what else did you need? Mm, you've got a website or is it just on Facebook at the moment? Mainly on Facebook. We do have a website which is rosieandthegoldbug.co.uk yep. but um, most of it's on the social media platforms and are you very are you very sort of prolific you sit there sort of always on it and yeah so if you want to come and say hi you know just message us and we'll we'll get back to you and you've got links as well to the video for hey you so tell us about hey you how did it come about uh, was it you three guys in the studio or was that one little separate project and then you brought it down to the guys to um it was a bit of both actually it was a it's about a friend who um was going through this relationship that uh, it was just a bit tricky and he did it the guy wasn't really taking her seriously and it was really hard to sit back and watch and I felt really affected by it I was mm. just like this is really sad and torturous and and I think you know love is can be just such a painful process if it's unrequited and it was just watching that so I wrote a song about it and I took it to Pixie and Bubs in the band and and uh, we yeah we just sort of bashed out different ideas and we go through a process of elimination so Pixie has to try it every different way yep. um, before we get to what we want to it to actually be and then eventually it gets there and then we're happy with it and um and that's what we've got now uh, so this is out on the 7th of august it'll be available uh, on itunes yeah right the way across there's also a video as well you can check out online you'll find that from your facebook page and obviously if you go onto your uh, twitter page as well thank you very much for coming all the way down today thanks for having me it's thank you it's been lovely and also uh, just for you to appreciate if you when you're listening out there it's it, when you come into the studio and you're singing and it's just keyboards and vocals you've got to be pretty good for it to sound like that and that, that, that that's without you know because when you're used to going on stage and you've got your you know you've, you've got your back line and all your headphones all the rest of it but you've come in and you've just sung beautifully so it was fantastic so thank you thank you so much really nice to see you beautiful looking girl as well don't forget you can paul's filming aren't you paul Yes, nodding it. But can we have a round of applause again, please? Thank you. Fantastic.